John 12, 19 says, The Pharisees said to one another, Look how the whole world has gone after him. <laughs> Look how the whole world has gone after him. Guys, that was the church talking. That was the church. The Pharisees were the representative of the church. I mean, that's what the church was at that time. They didn't understand Jesus. They didn't get it because he didn't fit inside of their neat little tidy. They, they were waiting for a king to come, like men would think, in all his pomp and circumstance, and, and, and with all this royalty and all this hoopla. And because Jesus came humbly as a servant, they just couldn't wrap their heads around that. Yeah, they, they couldn't wrap their heads around the fact that Jesus was calling the uncalled. That, that, that Jesus was, was going to those that were not chosen, that were not picked to be the spiritual leaders of their time. And he was calling them forth saying, come follow me. Yeah. He was doing everything opposite of what the church was doing. Yeah. Opposite, complete opposite of what the church was doing. And they didn't know how to handle it. They didn't know how to, how to accept that. Unfortunately, there's a large portion, especially in our, in our nation, of the church that is in the safe place. They, they think, and they're, they, they're following after a, a man's idea of what the church is supposed to be, of what the kingdom is supposed to be like, of what following Jesus is supposed to be like. But it's not what Jesus called the church to be. And it's been our passion to pray, not to judge, but to pray for the church in America, for the church, because we're part of the ride. I there was a, years ago, I, I and I was I was in rebellion against the ride because the Lord had opened my eyes to see how wayward, how adulterous, and how wrong the. My, as I've grown up in the church my entire life, I've been around it. And I was looking at it, and I thought, man, this is not the church that Jesus died for. This is not it. And so I rebelled for a period of time, and I was, there was a man who was speaking to my life back from about 2011 and to, well, until he passed away in 2013, um, that um, I was grousing to because we were talking about how we were going to change the church and I, and I was kind of in this negative connotation saying, well, the, you know, the church is so far gone, we're just going to have to kind of scratch the whole thing and start over. And, and with, with compassion and, and really tears in his eyes, he looks at me and says, yeah, the bride may be adulterous and stinky and, and dirty, but he's still madly in love with his bride and you need yeah. to be too. Yeah. Yes, and you so, right, I need yeah. to be too. Yeah. And so I repented that day and, and turned away from um, that. And, and I really felt the Lord say, you know, be the thing that everyone has heard the phrase, be the change. And that, how cliche that is, but the reality of it is, is that's what we're called to do, guys. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Be yeah. it. Do it. That's what you're called to do. <laughs> and you're called to do that in the church. And the church is called to be the change, but the church isn't changing a whole lot of things right now. And so it's going to have to start in individuals. People who are submitted to the Holy Spirit and yielded to the call of God in their life and willing to go where it's uncomfortable and where it makes no sense. And be willing to have people go, what are you doing? You, that is not, you're crazy. That, that's not honoring God. Have people come to you and say... You know, you're, you know, you just need to calm down. You're obnoxious. <laughs> you, you, just, I don't know what, why can't you just serve God the way other people are serving God? Why do you got to be like this? Why do you got to do things so extreme? Why do you got to do these crazy things? And you got to be willing to do some crazy stuff because it's not going to make sense in the human mind. It's, it's not, we're, we don't, God doesn't fit inside a nice little neat, you know, caboodle. I don't know if you. <laughs> You're like from 1987. Right? I know one of those. Yeah. But the ring. You guys, the gospel is not organized. It's it's messy. 
in me and gets into things. It's, okay? The kingdom of heaven is, is not this thing that we can say, okay, we're going to categorize it in this little compartmentalize it. You know, that's not it. That's not it. We have to be people that are reckless abandon. We sing a song, I'm chasing you. Well, what if he runs where it doesn't look like you want to go? And you're saying, I'm chasing you. Well, I was, but I don't want to go there, God. We have to be willing. We have to be people that are so surrendered that we're not, we're willing to run to the things that look at hard. We have to be willing to run to the things that, that look like, oh man, I'm going to have to sacrifice a lot to go there. I don't know if I can do that. And I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to try and do something. Guys, this is what it's gonna take for the church to be transformed. Yeah. This is what it's gonna take is people who are following after Jesus with complete reckless abandon. And it's gonna cost, it, it costs Jesus everything, and it's gonna cost you some things. But Jesus also said, take good, be a good cheer. I will overcome the world. You're walking into something greater than what you could ever experience on this earth. You're walking into something greater than, than, than a man could think of or plan. If you'll give God the opportunity to be the Lord of your life. To, and, and stop following what the world is saying. Stop following what the world says. Well, this is what you need to create. And this is what you need to, to have as your, you know, you need to, you need to be making sure that you're, you're making enough money. You need to be making sure that you've, you've got your retirement plan in place. And you need to be making sure that, you know, you've got all these different things. And you need to be making sure that, you know, your house is paid off in a certain amount of time. And these, you know, so that you can fit inside this little American dream. Okay, and somewhere, and then fit Jesus into that somewhere. <laughs> Jesus pretty much was abandoned by his hometown because they didn't understand what was going on. And, and he said himself, even the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. And so we, 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 are so used to being comfortable and so used to having those comforts and chasing after the things that we're told are important. When ultimately God wants to do something in the earth and it has to be done through us to accomplish the vision that he has for the kingdom of heaven being established on earth. I'm going to wrap this thing up because I, if you can't tell, I'm passionate about this. I want to see the church be who she was created to be. I want to see us following after the heart of God and running after him even into the dark places, running after him even into the scary places. Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. Okay, but it is a shadow. It, it is a shadow. It's the shadow of death. And it might look scary, but guess what? You come out on the other side. Rather be run over by a truck or a shadow. Right. Oh, yeah. That's right. So I'm done. We can go on to see out in the city. Yeah, let's pray this prayer. So that's where I was going. <laughs> Come on. Pray this right here. Come on. I appreciate it. So Lord Jesus, even your enemies felt that the whole world was coming to you. Great throngs sought you in the cities. Crowds found you in the countryside. Leaders came to you in secret. In our day and in our community, we ask that you would call forth movements of inquiry. Movements of repentance and movements of faith. Yes, Lord. Train faithful followers. Say, that's me. That's, that's me. me. Well, well, that Train. Wasn't very many of us. Huh? That wasn't very many of us. I know. Train faithful followers. Say, that's me. That's me. Okay. That's why we're here. That's why we're, we're not here to just sing some, 
said good sounding songs and okay, to have a little good feeling on the inside. This is for transformation so that you become a faith-filled follower. Train faithful followers to become fruitful leaders. Say, I'm a fruitful leader. I'm a fruitful leader. Who will draw even more to seek you. Yes, Lord. Who will draw even more yes, to seek you. Yes. Who will draw even more to seek you. Let's pray this corporately today. Let's pray for the Spirit of God. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We're praying for you to ignite the hearts of men to seek and to know Jesus. Okay, so let's just have a prayer with the Holy Spirit right now, directly to Him. Address Him by name, Holy Spirit. Ignite the hearts of many to seek and to know Jesus. Let's pray.
box today, we received an envelope that was not addressed with a return address, but it was addressed to you, and inside was a million dollars cash. You wouldn't go and just hide that cash in a box in the ground. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go and just shove it in the back of the closet and forget that it was there. You would, you would want to spend that million dollars. You would want to change your life because of that million dollars. And that million dollars would begin shaping all of your thoughts. That million dollars would begin shaping all of your decision making. That million dollars would change. You would think about how am I going to reinvest it? How can I make it grow? How can I make it last? What's going to, how, what can I do to make it profit me the most? And guys, we've been giving something so much greater than money. Yeah. We've been given something more precious than money can buy. And no amount of gold or silver or, or wealth could ever compare to the good news that we received. And I really feel that that's at the heart of disciples is, is that you have a treasure. You have a treasure. And many people, they find the treasure and then they just sit in a pew on Sunday for 40 years. Not doing anything with their treasure. Except for thanking Jesus, thanking Jesus, I have a treasure. Thank you, Jesus, I have a treasure. Thank you, Jesus, I have a treasure. I've got a treasure. Praise God from whom all blessings fall. I have a treasure. Okay? But they don't do anything to actually spend the treasure or reinvest it into the things that are going to benefit them the most. I really feel like this is at the heart of disciples. Because in order for a discipler to go and do, they have to be excited about what they have. They have to, they have to have the fire inside of them so that when they encounter someone, that person goes, whoa, you're different. And then that disciple says, yeah, come follow me as I follow Christ. So I'm praying right now, God, that... of the treasure that we hold would awaken in the hearts of believers that we would understand this incredible, precious jewel that you gave us and that we would begin to allow that to stir in us to stir and awaken in us the passion the passion, the passion of Christ, the passion of your heart, the passion of true love and relationship, the passion of knowing the creator of the universe, the passion of being friends, the passion of understanding that you are now a citizen of the kingdom of heaven because of what Jesus Christ has done. Let it rise in our city, in our churches. Set ablaze our hearts for the treasure that you've given us to share, to live it out, to let that shape and mold every intention, every purpose of our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen.
need her father. You need her father. That's what 
will break out and there will be whole villages, whole villages. You know, we're, we're in touch with some pastors over in, in, uh, over in Kenya and over in Kampala, Kampala and over in Africa where they say they go out and whole villages come to Christ. Yeah, it's because of desperation. So let me read that one more time. They told the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know, here's the, now we know, we know. Everybody say, we know. We know. We know. That he is indeed the savior of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. That he is indeed. We heard about him from you, but now we know. Yep. We heard about him. You told us about what he, he said to you. But now we know. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Yeah. The people experience you that way. Yes, Lord. Yes. Prosper today. Come on. And Douglas Ken. Just heard about him through our lips, through other people. Just share it. But, but so they come to know. They come to hear him speak to them. But they come to know that he is indeed their Savior. Not just their Savior, my Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus.
perfect readings in this treatment, that the tribe will be treated justly and find their destiny in highly dignity, or highest dignity. <laughs> the churches will flourish among them and that God's praise will be grow resounding in native languages. So God, I just want to pray today that you take a little grief out of the First Nations, the grief now and the generational grief, God, from past times when us as Americans have taken over the Native Americans and mistreated them in ways. So God, I pray that you would just come and touch their hearts and bring them into a joy of never ending. And I pray that you would bring their hearts. I pray that you connect the nations, that they would not be separate nations, that you would bring us into one nation and that we would be one nation under you, God. And I pray that you would touch our hearts and configure them in spirit and truth. And I pray that you would set a fire in their hearts, God. You bring them up into who they are. And I pray that you would show their true identity through them.
Let's declare this. The Lord is creating adaptability. The Lord is creating adaptability over me. Over me. I will succeed. I will succeed in geographical locations. In geographical locations. Under certain leadership. Under certain leadership. And financial situations. And financial situations. I declare I am a successful person. I declare I am a successful person in all of these things. In all I prosper in all things. I prosper in all things. I remain in health. I remain in health. Just as my soul prospers. Just as my soul prospers. So you get to do, go out and win and accomplish and overcome and, and succeed today in what you put your hand to. Uh, if you're coming tonight, show up a little bit early. 5.30 is uh, registration stuff. We're going to start pretty much on the dot at 6 o'clock. So, uh, and if you have uh, someone in mind that you know needs to be here, uh, bring them along. Bring them along. Have a great day.